outside into her, if you please, Captain Bush. Points of on target. Lynn stops ready. I defense lines, and bodies floating down the river bore grim testimony to battles fought hundreds of miles away. How I longed to be rid of the sickening stench of war, and to be home again with my wife, Barbara, and Richard, my little son. The Cutter clan had just arrived with mail, and Barbara's latest letter sharpened my own sickness. My beloved husband, the household here at Smallbridge has undergone an important transformation. Little Richard is no longer a baby, but has been put into small clothes. Breeches, if you please. But if you could see him, I think you would agree that your little Richard carries himself like a gentleman. Except that he sits down rather suddenly now and then, usually in mud puddles. And he still loves to dig holes in the ground around the shrubbery. He exhibits both physically and morally a partiality for the soil, which appears odd in the son of such a distinguished sailor. But in other ways, he reminds me more and more of you each day. If your first wife was still alive, she could not possibly love him better than I do. Let us forget the word stepson ever existed. When I have completed this letter, I shall have him affix his mark. And I dare say he will add such grubby fingerprints as will further identify his signature. I fought down the longing that her words brought, but I couldn't repress a surge of hope as I picked up the dispatches which had been delivered to my cabin with Barbara's letter. New orders from the Admiralty in London. Perhaps at last I was to return to England. This could mean my release. Their lordships desire me to advise you that the government attaches the greatest importance to maintaining the defense of Riga. They instruct me to inform you that they consider the safety of your squadron as secondary to the fate of Riga and its Russian defenders. Riga is the single most defensible point of Bonaparte's road to St. Petersburg, and it must be protected to the last man and ship. They charge you on your peril to remain in your present position and to do all in your power to prevent the enemy from continuing his march. On my peril, hmm? I suppose that means they'll shoot me if I don't. Big part, is it? Oh, nothing, nothing. I was just, just reading between the lines. Look, who the devil are you? Jenkins, sir. Oh, where's Brian? In sick quarters, sir. Well, nothing serious, I hope. No, sir, touch of egg. Uh, oh. you, you were saying, sir? Oh, nothing, nothing. Uh, give me my hat, please, and my pistols. I'm going ashore again. All the way to Riga, sir. Possibly. But the village at the river mouth is in ruins, sir. You'll be in a direct line of fire before you can reach it. Oh, what is that? It's the last outpost that protects the port. Besides, the Russians have dug trenches from cellar to cellar. It's safe enough. Oh, I hope so, sir. All I can say is that when I see that mess over there on the land, sir, I'm very glad to be a flavor. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I know what you mean, Jenkins. Compared with these infernal land operations, sea fighting is admirably quick and clean. We'll see what can be done to clear up that mess you refer to. And the sooner the better, Jenkins, for all hands, hmm? I ordered my gig and had myself rowed ashore. I took along one of my young officers from the Nunsuch, Lieutenant First. We reached the badly shattered village of the river's mouth and were picking our way through the ruins when suddenly... Uh, that was close. Would you better make for that trench over there? Oh, no, the bullets are merely ricocheting over here from the bombardment on the ramparts, Mr. Hurst. Uh, they're not shooting at us. We'll use this trench. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. Now, this should take us to the cellar of the church. Well, thank heaven the old church is still standing. Drive of it's in his staff and never find another headquarters in this shambles. French guns are nearer. They must have advanced their positions. Well, Colonel von Kreisowitz will give us all the details. Complete, you may be sure, with a mathematical forecast of the enemy's intentions. I keep hearing about this Prussian von Clausewitz, and yet the Prussians are allied with Bonaparte. He's here. Von Clausewitz left his own country in order to fight Bonaparte. But do you trust him? Oh, yes, yes. A man of principle there, and talented, besides. Oh, but I shall never get used to land operations, I'm afraid. These correct soldiers with their correct tactics and, and the way they condescend to ships, huh? <laughs> you all hear. A direct hit on the trench, sir. Just over there. Oh, well, that's luck. We're approaching the church cellar, anyhow. Yes, sir. There it is, just ahead. 
How goes the defense? Very well, all things considered. Of course, the French are making progress. No matter what we do, this village is doomed. Oh? If you would care for prediction of the enemy's exact position, as it will be tomorrow, sundown. Well, if you don't mind, I'm rather more interested in the enemy's exact position as it is today. Very good. If you will climb up into the tower with me, I will point out their latest games. This stairway over here will take us up into the belfry. Excellent. Come along, Mr. Hurd. I... You will see that the French sappers have approached dangerously near our earthworks. All we can hope to do is to delay the inevitable. Then Riga will be next. Oh, come now. Don't sound so cheerful. After all, we, we should be able to do a little better than that, hmm? You think so? Wait until you see. Hey, the village is already more than half surrounded. Ah, here we are in the car. The gallery on which we sat before is gone, you will notice. Mm. But if you come to this window, you will observe... As you can see, the village is a mass of red. But why is there so little firing from your own battery, sir? Ah, too many of our gunners have been killed. Too many of our guns destroyed, my young friend. Since our men and equipment are so scarce, we must preserve them for the enemy's final assault. And when do you estimate that assault will come, Colonel? According to my calculations, they will be ready to storm the newest breach they have made in our defenses. I... Well, the day after tomorrow. But the, the day after tomorrow? You mean we've just 48 hours then? Well, you should have told me sooner. I, I, I might Commodore, have... we must be realistic. As a naval officer, you may not realize. See, you are there. It's an exact science, dating back hundreds of years. Yes, I'm sure you're right, but can't we leave the school books out of it this time and concentrate on the Frenchman over there? Our next move at this point is obviously to make a limited sortie against the besiegers. If only to delay their assault by a few hours. Oh, yes. All the authorities would agree that that is the correct procedure. And no one ever breaks the rules, is it? Well, confounded man, if the French know a sortie is due, won't they prepare for one? Of course they is. Well, then, what's the point? A sortie is our one logical course. Logic, logic. Their move, our move. It's like a chess game, guys. It. Can't we move out of turn for once, do something they won't expect? Well, I uh, think that you have perhaps a better suggestion, Colonel. Well, I... Well, perhaps I haven't, after all. My men are fighting a losing battle, and they know it, Commodore. But they are fighting bravely all the same. My own life is forfeit the moment the enemy enters the town. As you know, I am a Prussian, and the Prussians fighting with the French call me traitor. If I saw any chance to break this siege, do you not think I would do it? Of course, of course, yes. I understand. I, I only wish there were a way to interrupt their preparations. Sir. Observe. They have completed their second parallel, not more than 200 yards from my defense. Their battery there in the middle would cut up any force attacking frontally. How about their flanks? Are they also secure? One flank is guarded by the river, the other by the bay, and those big guns pointed out to sea. The guns which make impossible any more bombing from your ships. Yes, but the water of the bay is still our strongest position. You realize that, Colonel? Water? What good does it do us? In the end, it is always the infantry on which one must depend. The infantry? Why not? Why not? Why not? What do you say, Commodore? Because of it, perhaps that's it. The, the infantry and the ships. They can stop us from using bomb vessels there in the bay, yes, by, by daylight. But can they stop an infantry attack from boats at night? <laughs> keeping the landing force together. All must reach the shore at once. No landing in driblets. Are the troops allocated to, to particular barges? Well, they will be, Duncan, as soon as I can confer with the Russian staff. Where do we pick them up, sir? Well, they'll be marched to that point on the river which I indicated on our chart, remember? Well, of, of course, our own boat's crews will man the barges. Well, Captain Bush, you, you look as if you had some news. I, I have, sir. Mr. Adams has just returned from his mission in Riga. It's just the river barges you asked the Russians for are being ready. Very good, Captain Bush. Sail the starboard bow! She's flying the Russian colors. Excellent. That must be the Russian generals from Riga. I got word to them before I came aboard. And 
so at dawn, we surprised the French just here, from the bay, you understand? From the bay? Yes, General. My men will handle the barges which will carry in your troops. Now, here is the French flank where they've set up their shore battery. Will you attack there, General Sheftoff? Is that understood? Yes, understood. The storming of the earthworks farther up the shore. May we entrust that phase to General Kredensky? Yes, yes. What? Uh, I thought you spoke no English, General Kredensky. <laughs> <laughs> he does not. Yes, it's the only word he knows. Oh, is oh. that not true, Kredensky? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but you will make sure that he understands, right? Oh, understood. Well, I needn't tell you the importance of preventing Riga's fall. Even if Napoleon's forces are turned back before Moscow, we're the last block on his road to St. Petersburg. We will stop them in the south. We will stop them in the north. The great spirit of Russia will rise up and destroy every last Frenchman on Russia's holy soil. Sterling words, General Shevstov. Your men will have a chance to put them to action very soon. Sir! Yes, come in, boys. What is it? Come it's in. Governor Esnoff from Riga, sir. Lugger just brought him out from shore. He says he tried to catch up with the generals. He's um, uh, quite flustered, sir. Anything wrong? Uh, he's coming down. He'll tell you himself. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Yes. Something most terrible has happened. Oh, what is it, Governor? Terrible news. It has just come. Moscow has fallen. What? Moskva, Kudachevsky. Moskva. Moskva! Moskva! Well, all the more important that we do our job well, gentlemen. Stop the French here and you save St. Petersburg. It's bad news, but we must hold firm to our plan. A dawn attack. <laughs> After a few final details had been arranged, the Russians left us gloomily. Bush seemed worried. Looks like the heart went right out of them. Sir, uh, do you suppose they'll fight now that Moscow's fallen? Why shouldn't they? The Tsar hasn't surrendered. Russia's a big country, remember, Bush? There'll be English lives at stake tonight, too, sir. I'm aware of that. They always are. I had more than a few misgivings myself. But I planned as carefully as I knew how. Back on shore, I discussed the scheme with Clausewitz, and by midnight, all arrangements were completed. There were, of course, too many imponderables about the whole affair. My body and brain felt unspeakably weary as I paced around the church belfry and stared out into the blackness. Clausewitz was not inclined to be very helpful just then. Mm, it is indeed a novel idea. An attack launched in this fashion in the face of a besieging army. But I could never venture to predict its success, Commodore. Still, the waiting was difficult. Was it my imagination, or was there a, a strange tension about the French camp? A few bivouac fires dotted the night. Everywhere else, there's stillness and uncertainty. In its very silence, the enemy seemed to crouch, waiting. What was that, Clausewitz? I never simply, probably. Mm. Oh, no doubt you're right. Uh, are your men alerted for anything that may happen? Of course. Good. There is nothing we can do until dawn, Commodore. Why do you not quest yourself very well? There is a pallet of straw over there in the corner. Uh, sleep is out of the question, Glazowitz. Uh, I am tired. It's very strange. You know, the stars seem three times their proper size. My knees. <clears throat> Uh, yes, I... I will just sit down and rest a moment. Just rest my eyes, too. I regret to have no better accommodation. Oh, this straw does nicely. What was that? That one almost hit the church. Do you feel the whole tower tremble? This is a slightly risky approach of yours, I must say, Colonel. So the French decided to break the rules at the same time we did, huh? Perhaps you prefer the cellar, Commodore. It is safer there. No, thank you, Colonel. I shall stay here. How much of this kind of battering can your defenses stand, Padre? The French are trying to storm the bricks they made in our ramparts today. Oh. I have just sent more men to defend it. They may hold there for a short time, but... Well... Uh... Oh, now I appreciate your strategy in conserving guns and men. Yeah. Your men are fighting well down there in spite of darkness and surprise. Congratulations, Colonel. Thank you, Commodore. And I, since you are generous, I must admit to you, my calculations were somewhat incorrect. Oh, well. I did not think the French assault would come so soon. Well, if your men could hold out until our landing force attacks, we'll do our best, even after they storm the reach. As they will do, of course. Well, Mr. Hurst, have you any news? No, sir. I, I went to the riverbank and slipped up as far as the bay shore as I could. No sign of the barges yet, sir. Oh. It was too dark to see farther. Well, I'll keep your eye open for a signal flare from the bay. That'll mean our men are starting in. Well, 
Oh, quite a show, eh, Mr. Hurst? I've never seen anything like it, sir. There are fewer flashes from the, um, the starboard section of our lines, you notice? Yes. What does that mean, sir? Hmm. It means that most of our gunners are dead. About that breach, couldn't we? Couldn't you throw up a hasty second line behind it? Here, don't take my glass. Now the next flash will illuminate it. There, there. Do you see? There's natural cover there, rocks, a few ruins. Yes, yes. And the breach is still narrow. Yes. There has to be a thin line, though. We'll have men to spare. Well, let the French believe they've taken it, and then fall on their first wave from behind cover. What about You're that? Right. I, I... Ah, he may see. The French are storming the beach now. If our first line will only hold. I see their torches. They're going through that. Ah, there is our reply. I bless those men of ours. The charge is slow. Your men are holding them. Good lads. Cannot be so very long, my dear. There's a streak of grey in the sky, sir. It won't be long till dawn. Why don't those barges come? Sir, look. There's one French soldier down there in the square. He must have got through before the others. He seems crazed, doesn't he? He's seen us, sir. He's fighting up here. Here, take one of my pistols. We'll pepper him if necessary. Aye, aye, sir. Are you hit, sir? Uh, well, no. Just my hat. <laughs> sea captain's cocked hat's not too practical up here. Now, get that fellow. Listen, Colonel, I, I suggest we're accomplishing nothing up here. Why don't we go down to the breach and organize that second line ourselves, eh? Excellent idea. The end is coming soon. I have no the rules. I prefer to die down there than be taken a prisoner. Fighting against my own country, I will be caught, muscled, and shot. Yes, let us go down. Yes, I have no desire to rot in a French prison either, Colonel. Right. We shall go down at once, then, Commodore. We shall rally the men's spirits, at least. Are you ready? Sir, wait. Look over there. Just where the river meets the bay. Our signal flare. Yes, sir. It is. It is. The landing barges. Look, Commodore. Where? There's no more fighting in the breach. The French shall need those troops at the bay. The day is saved. Horatio Hornblower, starring Michael Redgrave, is based on the novels by C.S. Forrester. Music composed and conducted by Sidney Torch. Produced by Harry Allen Towers.